On behalf of George Brandon, Sasha Stamenkovic and Miguel Cuesta, I would like to present to you a European training model for robotic thoracic surgery. We thank Mrs. Rulin Koch for her valuable contribution. We disclose that Mr. Stamenkovic and myself are proctors for Intuitive Surgical Incorporated. We did not receive any financial support for this paper. Video assisted thoracoscopic surgery or VATS for major pulmonary resections is being increasingly implemented ever since its introduction in the late 90s. The evolution of VATS lobectomy from multi to uniportal VATS shows an improvement of technical issues which create conditions that are similar to open thoracotomy. However, teaching of this technique remains demanding. Robot-assisted surgery is an evolving technique comprising of over 4,000 operational Da Vinci systems worldwide up to September 30, 2017. Over the past five years, the focus of robotic surgery has been directed at its application in thoracic surgery as the novel minimally invasive technique to perform major lung resections and resections of mediastinal masses, Consequently, there is an increasing demand for a structured, standardized training module. Several authors have demonstrated the feasibility and safety of rats for thymectomy, lobectomy, sleeve lobectomy, segmentectomy and pneumonectomy for lung cancer and a variety of other complex thoracic procedures. All agree that surgery of the closed chest requires thorough knowledge of the anatomy and specific dexterities to cope with life-threatening complications. Therefore, at this moment, only experienced thoracic surgeons are being trained. As opposed to VATS, robotic surgery has many features that allow expeditious and safe teaching of this technique whilst maintaining quality. Having said that, we can focus on training young surgeons such as fellows and residents in order to integrate the robotic training in the overall surgical residency as is already happening in the United States. As the development of new robotic systems continues rapidly, so does the training for robotic surgery. Ever since the release of the Da Vinci S system in 2000, the training to become a console surgeon has shifted from mostly self-taught surgeons to surgeons who are subjected to a defined training facilitated by the company, so they can perform reliable and safe procedures. Further developments have led to the SI system and most recently the XI and X system with improved exercises available on the DV skill simulator. The plastic model serves its purpose for port placement, docking and undocking. E-learning modules are available for all systems. A recent development by Kindheart is a simulation model with real animal and porcine tissue. These models can be used for a variety of operations and allow more realistic surgery than the DV skill simulator. The latter development urges us to rethink the current training model with expensive porcine and cadaver models. Here we show the training program in our facility back in 2011 with the SI system. At that time, we had to cope with little experience in robotic thoracic surgery in Europe and thus few proctors. This actually turned out in our favor as we got the chance to work with the pioneers and experts such as Professor Melfi and Professor Serfolio. Two major drawbacks concerned the fact that the simulator was purchased more than a year later and a dual console system is until today not available for our unit. Another lesson we have learned is that the robotic thoracic program run by only one console surgeon and one bedside surgeon is a vulnerable situation. It was therefore decided shortly after the learning curve to train other staff members. It is from that experience that we recommend starting with training of two console surgeons and one bedside surgeon. The training as we know it today has evolved by the addition of e-learning modules. 
Hands-on training courses are held at IRCAD in Strasbourg and EEC in Paris, both in France, and at the Orsi Academy in Belgium. Two courses are identified, the beginner's course in which the surgical team is led through the ins and outs of the system and practices on porcine models to get the feel of the console, is guided by an experienced robotic console surgeon instead of a technician. And of course, participants get to work on the simulator as well. In the advanced course, the trainees work on cadavers and the obje objective is to perform thoracic procedures such as lobectomy. Again, this course is led by a surgeon in order to focus on everyday practice, troubleshooting and trouble solving. This kind of training includes many positive and some negative aspects. It is time consuming and intense training, often with travel from one country to the other, but it allows the team members to be submerged into rats. As Park indicated, that before implementation of robotics into a clinical practice, the surgeon and operating room team should attend an intensive two-day certified course. Unfortunately, several items of the training are non-committal, which can lead to insufficient time spent doing dry runs, practicing docking and emergency undocking, and practicing at the simulator. Case observations are facilitated by intuitive, but the frequency can be increased and it is more useful to organize a team case observation rather than a surgeon case observation. Although there are now more proctors than in 2011, their availability and commitment to a thorough training may vary due to the workload. All in all, it is a costly training. It is therefore important to get trained only in the context of a successful program. Here we suffer, summarize several conditions that are necessary for implementation of RATS. The board directors of the hospital as well as the staff of the thoracic surgery department should be supportive and willing to start a robotic thoracic program. Explicit collegial support is a prerequisite. There should be sufficient budget to acquire the latest generation surgical robot, preferably together with other disciplines, to a certain maximum use of the robot. A dual console unit, a simulator and a recording device should be an indispensable part of the business case to be used for proper teaching and training purposes. Requirements for the surgical teams can be captured in one word, dedication. The surgical team comprises of two to three scrub and circulating nurses, one anesthetist and two anesthesia technicians, a dedicated bedside assistant and two surgeons that will be trained on the console. This dedicated team can be expanded later on in the process according to the amount of patients that can be operated annually. It is definitely not recommended to have alternating team members in the starting phase as it will slow down the entire process with potential deleterious effects. The use of the simulator and review of the recorded procedures should be encouraged. Patient selection is key when the program is just starting, and although it's a costly issue to perform simple cases, such as wedges, pleurectomies and bullectomies, it shortens the learning curve and enhances technical skills and should therefore be allowed. In June 2016, a working panel was created including members of the European Society of Thoracic Surgeons and European Association for Cardiothoracic Surgery with a specialist interest in robotic thoracic surgery with focus on training. An e-consensus finding exercise using the Delphi methodology was applied which resulted in consensus on that a standardized robotic training should be divided in clearly defined sections as a staged learning pathway. The basic training is to include a baseline evaluation, an e-learning module and simulation training. 
The advanced training must include e-learning with video demonstration of index procedures, access to video library, simulation training, console training, full mentored procedures, and a final evaluation of a submitted video to be certified by independent examiners. The proposal for a training program in Europe is based on our own experience and on a selection of the most influential papers concerning this topic. If the goal is to implement robotic surgery as part of the surgical spectrum in order to offer patients, especially those with lung cancer, the best possible tailor-made treatment, a long-term plan or vision should be designed. From an economic point of view, it is important, as well, to ascertain that the robot will be used 24-7. Designated slots in the operation program avoid frustrations concerning the availability of the robot and the dedicated team. The fellows and or residents of thoracic surgery and anesthesiology participate actively in the program. It is not necessary to have any experience in VATS. As several studies have shown the benefits of simulation, we state that working on the simulator to achieve proficiency should be compulsory before the trainee is allowed to move from the bedside to the console. It is emphasized that thorough knowledge of the anatomy and surgical principles is mandatory. The dual console system, however, allows the trainee to act as console surgeon as long as an experienced console surgeon sits next to him for guidance throughout the operation. Initially, sections of the operation can be done and consequently proceed to performing the entire operation. To achieve and maintain dexterity, the robotic skills must be practiced every week. Having passed this initial learning curve, the aim should be at at least 50 anatomic resections per year. General infrastructure is mandatory and must include the instant availability of an intensive care unit. Now we stumble on several difficulties when setting up a training curriculum linked to a time path, such as variability in surgical experience, the availability of suitable patients and the availability of mentors. However, by linking the program to a time path, a certain flow should be achieved to go from one competency level to the other. It is our conviction that the learning curve depends on the amount of performed procedures and on the time frame the procedures are performed in. Undoubtedly, high volume specialized centers and high volume surgeons have a positive impact on patients' outcomes. Serfolio has described in detail didactic routes and steps that should be followed to gain skills and proficiency in robotic major lung resections. The surgeon needs to become familiar with positioning of the robot, its arms and its instruments, the binocular and 3D visualization, a restricted operative field, the handling of robotic surgical tools with a joystick, thus from a distance, and the absence of tactile feedback. Here the skills that must be exercised uh, are summarized with an approximation of the time to be spent practicing. The exercises and the estimated duration necessary to become competent enough to move comfortably to the next level is merely based on our own experience and remains open for discussion. Team training is mandatory. Simulation training must include exercises for camera and clutching, endo-wrist manipulation and fourth arm integration and uh, the exercises should be performed to at least a level of 80%. A protocol for emergency conversions should be available and practiced. Briefing and debriefing sessions must be held before and after each procedure, the first 5 to 7 in the presence of a proctor. This table shows which items need to be evaluated A proctor is partly responsible for the well-being of the patient. Therefore, we propose to apply the term mentor as he should lead the porcine and cadaver courses, he should provide the observation cases, and he guides the beginning team through the initial learning curve. The mentor feels the commitment and responsibility to train and teach the team. 
The objective of the mentor is to facilitate the starting phase and lead it into a phase where robotic surgery is fully implemented in the surgical spectrum. It is therefore deemed fundamental that eligible mentoring surgeons in robotic thoracic surgery should be beyond the initial learning curve and perform at least 50 anatomic pulmonary resections per year. Side by side to having a reputation of high quality should be a compulsory training in teaching skills, such as the teach the teacher training. The mentor must also have insight in the feedback that the trainees give him in order to improve his skills. Items regarding the quality of a European training program need to be assessed and it is important that the scientific society or a nested robotic thoracic working group should act as a certifying body for the training program. Submitted videos of several index procedures can be assessed by independent experts which will lead to certification. Furthermore, Assessment of competence at the end of the program by the associated mentor and quality monitoring after completion of the program should be done. It would sound logical that certification can be repeated periodically in order to maintain high quality. At the end of the teaching period there should be an adequate evaluation of this experience. The entire team should be present together with the CSR and further steps to maintain a successful RATS program are discussed. A database should be created from the beginning in which several patient characteristics and surgeon and surgery variables can be registered to monitor the patient outcome, surgical results and progression of skills and learning curve. With the minimally invasive world being divided into pro-robot and pro-vat surgeons and Intuitive Surgical Incorporated being the only company so far with the only working robotic platform, the discussion will be centered around the costs of robotic surgery and the fact that there is no evidence of one technique surpassing the other as far as patients' well-being is concerned. Creating a European database in which all robotic surgeons can register their patients and results will allow profound research with enough patients to achieve statistical power. This is necessary to establish the value of robotic thoracic surgery for patients with malignancies of the lungs and mediastinum. We conclude that robotic thoracic surgery can be taught to surgeons of varying level of experience. Exercises on the skill simulator, a dual console system and videotaping with independent assessment by experts are very useful tools to achieve high quality robotic surgery. All this requires commitment of the trainee, the surgical team, including anesthesia, as well as the mentor and the hospital administration. Thank you very much for watching.